Hey everyone, welcome to Author Tidbit. Um, today I am here with one of my bestest friends, Heidi Kimball, <laughs> and we are going to talk about redeeming difficult characters or redeeming, well, really redeeming any character, I guess, that needs redeeming. <laughs> <laughs> So redeeming the redemption character. The redemption character, which is something that I think all authors at some point in time are gonna have to do. And I don't even think it matters the genre, do you? No, you should I mean, otherwise you're like it just gets kind of boring if you don't have any redemption characters, because then they just have arcs that are usually kind of flat. Simple. Yeah. Yeah, it's a flat line character. So um, which we are both romance authors, so this probably will tend more towards romance, but I think probably most anything could apply, right? Oh, probably, yeah. Okay. So I guess my first question is, where do you even start to redeem a character? <sighs> well, I think you have to kind of think about, okay, so I think this is a common misconception because there's character growth and then there's redemption, and those are such different things, Right. Okay. Tell because, us the difference. So character growth is something all characters will hopefully undergo, right? Because if they mm -hmm. don't, you're not really interested in them as a reader. They just aren't interesting. Um, but a, char a character that has to undergo, undergo character growth has um, some, usually a lower starting point, right? Like they're not the best person or they have some big flaw or weakness. And um depending on how much growth you want them to undergo, it kind of depends on where they start. Right. Okay. And these ones are fun to cheer for. Cause you might not like them at the beginning. You might even hate them at the beginning because they're jerks or they're shallow or, you know, whatever it is. Right. But their growth will be kind of just this like steady line upward generally. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a redemption character usually has to fall, right. They have to commit some big act or, they do make some decision that makes them fall in our reader's eyes. They might start as a great character or they might start as a bad character, but they're going to fall to the point where they have to be redeemed. And okay. so that's the biggest difference. They aren't going to have just this slow, steady upward motion. They are going to go all the way down and then have to like really climb and usually do some great act to kind of overcome that negative thing that they did. If that so makes there's sense. kind of like a sharp drop and then a gradual Yes, but then, you really can't have that sharp end, come out, right? At the end, there's got to be some big thing that's like equal or greater to what they did that made people hate them. <laughs> okay. I'm now going back in my mind with all of my redemptions. Did they do something greater? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> equal to or greater. And a lot of times it's like a very, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like you think about like the beast from Beauty and the Beast, right? Right. He, um, it's hard to say what exactly, like you could say that he was so rude to the enchantress and so he got everyone cursed. But in terms of like his relationship with Belle, she, he separated her from her father, right? Like that was the thing that he did that was kind of unforgivable. Like she had done nothing. Right. She was just trying to help him. And he sent her father away and said that she could never see him again. So at the end, the act is, is that he lets her go back to her father, even when he thinks it's going to be the thing that keeps him from breaking the spell, right? So that's the equal or greater than because not only did he let her go, he let her go when he thought he's giving up his chance at, right. at breaking the spell. At the risk of his own peril, right? Totally. Or salvation. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, that <laughs> makes total sense. So that's just like a really good example because you can see it's almost the exact opposite of the act that he originally Okay, did. so... Do sometimes, which I was, so I'm guessing with our redemption characters, though, their growth and their redemption overlap because oh, totally. their, their like, redemption becomes their growth. Right. Well, and, and a, a redemption character has to undergo, undergo character growth, right? Or they'll right. never be redeemed. But not all characters that are having character growth need to be redeemed. Right. Does that makes sense. Right. Although yep. all characters should have growth. All characters have Unless, to have growth. Other, they're just they're boring. They're boring. Yes. Yeah. They're boring. Okay. Right. So next question. Can all characters be redeemed in your opinion? Um, no. And I'll tell you why. Um, usually you're not going to write a character that 
like that's like an important part of the story that you like that you want people to care about that can't be redeemed right because right. you're choosing what their act is right like what they're doing but there is something actually called the uh, moral event horizon oh and so this is like it's like it's termed off of the black a black hole it's called the event horizon which there's like a point at which light can't even escape from a black hole because right. the gravity is so strong and so that's kind of that same line we're referring to is if you cross that and usually that has to do with like if you're taking pleasure in cruelty or if there's like you know like a serial killer or hitler these are people that can't be redeemed because they've committed some act that no matter what they do, you can't really make up for it. Right. So I think in romance, it's it can be hard to cross that line because usually you're not going to be doing something that deep and dark. But it, it, it does apply in other genres. And a lot of times when you get a character who's more of like a controversial redemption character, it be, could be because this line isn't quite clear. Like, did they cross that line? I, like so, for some people, right. they for some people, they didn't. Everyone has sort of a different line. But that, like, might be why people say, like, Darth Vader couldn't necessarily be redeemed because he killed all those, like, Jedi kids in that little, in the school. Like, that's... Spoiler! Spoiler alert! Hopefully no one's seen it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but that can, can cause some controversy. Well, uh, and, you know, he's blown up planets and, yes. you know, I mean... Right. Okay. But yet they did redeem him. But people would say that's controversial. Like, did he commit an equal act on the opposite end when he saved his one? I don't know. Like, anyway, it's true because it's it's family. So does it mean it doesn't mean necessarily the same thing, right? Right. Well, and you don't see his character growth either, right? You don't see this like slow, steady upward. Like, it's more like in the moment he's changing. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. Yeah, I don't know. We just watched that in the theaters on Friday. The and, final. And did you feel like he was redeemed? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say just because it's, I think it, it's such a part of culture. Right. And well, it's and something was... that we've grown up with. So right. I don't know if we transfer redemption onto him and we maybe interpret growth where maybe there isn't some i don't know i've never looked at him really and watched all three together with carrot with growth with character and growth redemption in mind, in mind. Here's the fact, though like for any author that's going to write a redemption character you mm -hmm. just have to know going in that not everyone is going to accept him yeah. oh and if you're an author right? who's had a redemption you're gonna be told <laughs> oh totally. not everyone's gonna I mean, accept that's it. just like the classic because yeah because you can't write a redemption character if you're not willing to have some people not be willing to forgive them. Right. Right. Like you have to, like each reader is making their own choice if uh -huh. they feel like it was like a satisfying end to that character. And not everyone will be because we're all wired a little differently. We all exactly are differently. Well, and, and everyone that. has, has backstories of their own that they're going to carry. Oh, into totally. the book. And so depending Absolutely. on their backstory, you know, yes. Can totally change everything. Oh, yeah. Like certain things will trigger them mm -hmm. or just feel harsher to them than they might for other people. Right. So if you are, if you have a, a protagonist. Oh, shh. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Don't mind the dogs. <laughs> if you have a protagonist that you are. Stop. Um, that you are not wanting to redeem, but you, you find people caring about them you're in a problem <laughs> do you think yes or no I don't know if that's a problem because I, I think it's just oh like I think you always want your readers to be connecting with and caring for your characters right but if even if they're not to be redeemed ever I I, I don't see that happening very often Right. Like, I feel like it's hard enough to redeem a character that you want to redeem. So for someone Maybe that you don't, true. I feel like it's pretty hard for people to, like, care about them because you're not showing those characteristics or aspects. Unless perhaps maybe and maybe this is genre specific, because mm. I guess what I'm thinking of is, you know, when you get mysteries. OK, then sometimes I think as Mr. Rex, 
you end up maybe writing a character in a way that does make them. So then I guess at some point you have to show the manipulation. Right. And I think there can be, I think it's possible for there to be understanding, like, like their backstory right. out redemption. Right. Like right. you might understand, like the sounds so dumb. I just watched the thing on the serial killer <laughs> <laughs> and you understood like he has some mental handicap stuff but also like just a very very dark background from his family right and that made me understand him but it doesn't make me be like oh well killing all those girls was okay okay you know what i'm yeah. saying like, oh yeah so i think it's possible it. and i think a good writer will do both right like right. it's very hard to have any person that's completely black and white that's just not realistic right every one of us has some of that gray some of the black some of the white and it as a, as a writer, you're shining light on those different aspects of them to make them a multifaceted character. Well, and I would guess that that character has a certain degree of proficiency at manipulation. Oh, totally. To be able to get to a point where they are to be able to do what they do, right? Yes. So, which makes them that multifaceted person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you find that readers are, I have a, an opinion on this, but <laughs> that readers are more skewed to redeeming a man versus a woman? 100%. Like, so I, I think I should do, I've been studying redemption characters for this class I'm teaching uh -huh. as filmmakers. And I can tell you, girls undergo a lot of character growth. Uh -huh. They are not redemption characters. It is so rare. And I think women are just harder to forgive and I think it's true of both women and men. Like, I don't, because like you think about our genre, right? Mm -hmm. we, we're geared toward women. Right. Readers, and even women have a hard time reading and forgiving women that do bad things. It's just like an interesting standard that we're held to. I wonder if that has something to do with the women are supposed to be inherently nurturing. And so. And like, and, and inherently better, you know, like the, the better sex or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Like. It was interesting because I was talking to another author friend about this and we were talking about one of her books where I wouldn't say the girl is a redemption character necessarily, but she makes some pretty like bad choices that affect one of her friends. And that book has the, her lowest reviews out of any of the other books she's written. And I think it's one of her best. Yeah. But people have such a hard time relating to women redemption characters. Well, I have that. I have one that well, yeah um, is it Rose yeah the Baron's mm -hmm. Rose, Rose. Mm -hmm. and um, which you know in truth what okay here's the thing though is in her story we had to backpedal a little bit and make her not realize quite the extent to which she contributed to the bad part but still she wasn't as aware right so it didn't she wasn't quite as willing of a participant as maybe it, had seemed. it appeared mm. but yet she still was a participant yeah but it's one of my favorite stories and but yet it is my lowest rated and I, it's because people are just like I just I'm not sure that I can ever get you know I can ever get over what she did well and that's the classic sign of a redemption character right people saying that and I was like but I think it's so it, it to me it was like I never had thought about it but it um, I am always amazed at, I guess, some people's lack of grace. Oh, totally. Towards characters. Like there mm -hmm. is no, and I've had it with men too, where there'll be like, oh, she should have gotten so much worse than that. I mean, or he should have, they oh, should have oh, punished him so much worse. I mean, there is no forgiveness. And when a character shows grace, towards someone else then it's like oh you just made her weak you she was strong through the whole oh, book yeah. and then you made her weak by which I find so interesting well you know I think it's an interesting thing because okay this is just me talking out loud this is not true if this is I just am like you know yeah. so but we, I feel like we now especially live in a world where grace is not offered to people yeah, like you think like true. cancel culture, like mm -hmm. we're so willing to just like X people, yeah. right? Rather than like 
do they, could they become a different person if they were given another chance? You know what I mean? Or are they even entitled to that right. opportunity well, and that's or to have a, a different view? Mm hmm. And so it's just like an interesting thing. I, I, I don't know if this is true. I just am curious if the way we've been taught, you know, like that people make a mistake and it's like kind of unforgivable. Yeah. If that kind of sh like makes us less willing to extend that to characters and books too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I wrote a book and uh, like I had a bad guy in it and I was like, you know what? I'm killing him. He's gone because I don't want to hear about that. Oh, he should have. You should have had him go here or he should have been punished this way. And mm -hmm. then I was like, maybe I'm going to get a lot of backlash. None. No one was sad that he was like, old. yes, he's gone. They were like, oh, serves him right. And I was like, what in the heck? So anyway, but yet I had a character with PTSD who wasn't very nice and kidnapped someone. And she forgave him and was like, just get him away from me and then we're fine mm -hmm. and people were like oh, no he should have gone to fleet and he should have and I'm like oh harsh people yeah I just think and those were men so I guess they all men aren't redeemable no, I, I'm not saying all men are yeah. I just think you just don't find women redemption characters because they are so hard to pull off yeah and you will always someone should have told me that we should have had this conversation before I wrote that book. Five years ago. Sorry, Mindy. <laughs> Although I don't know. Is that, do you have any women in your, in any of your writing? Do you have any women redemption? Uh, not really. I mean, let's just be honest, Mindy. I've written like four books. <laughs> no, you haven't. You've written more than that. Well, I mean, like novellas beyond that. And they don't have time to redeem characters. That's so. true. They really don't. Oh, most novellas really don't even. Do. I, I literally have one redemption character, Callum, mm -hmm. that you gave me an earful about. <laughs> uh, so if this is my advice to authors when you're writing a redemption character, have a lot of beta readers. Yes. A lot of, like, there will be people that are softies that are totally willing to forgive your character. Mm -hmm. And then you need people that are like hardliners, like, he hasn't you know, groveled enough. He mm -hmm. hasn't put in enough time. He hasn't done this. He hasn't done that because you need that full spectrum of feedback. Right. Because that's what your readers are, right? They're going to give yeah. you the full spectrum of, of, you know. Yeah. Reviews. I remember, I remember when I was writing a rake story and um, I had someone who said, I hate rakes. They're terrible. They're horrible. I hate them. I would never write one, but if you're going to, <laughs> <laughs> this here are the four things that I think have to happen well, for yeah, me to I, be able to buy it. I vaguely remember that. Yes. yes. And at first when I got it, I was like, shut up. And then I read them and then I thought about it and I was like, huh. okay, I take back the shut up first of all. And second of all, this might actually be a good idea. There might be something to this. There might be something to it. And I will say, in fact, it's the audio book that I'm just reviewing right now. It should, it's, uh, it's just being finished being produ produced for audio book. And as I was listening to it, I was like, okay, she was right. It did need that. You know, it did need those things. Each one of those things. Yeah. Well, I, I will be honest. I think you can do a redemption character in any genre, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you'll find them in any kind of writing, but I do think there is something particularly difficult about doing a redemption character in a romance because it's like such a personal thing. You're like feeling protective of the other character. If they've like mm -hmm. done something that's wounded that, you know, there's just a lot going yeah. on there. And so you do have to, I would say like add in even an extra layer of all of the, that character growth and the, like them showing that they've changed and that redemption, you know, like, what we're talking about that full, you know, coming full right. circle kind of a thing has to be very, very evident. Um, if you want to write a good, um, romantic, uh, redemption character. Yeah, I would agree. And I think that, um, I think I don't remember what I just thought. <laughs> I think that too, Mindy, whatever you're going to say. I think that. I agree. Oh, what was I going to say? Anyway, I'm sure it was very profound. It and I'm sure is. all listeners are very sad 
that they are not going to hear it. <laughs> She's like a moment lost to time. <laughs> I have a lot of moments lost to time, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, oh, I was going to say, I think redemption characters are even harder because you know they have this heavy backstory, but yet you love them, which is why you're redeeming them. Yes. And so you have this, you have this, it's a totally different relationship with that character, I think, than you have with just a growth character. Oh, absolutely. You know, because you're, you're almost having to not necessarily excuse, but like embrace what they did, but still love them and want them to not get hurt in addition, because you know, at some point in time, that's going to come out and they're going to be hurt. Yes. Well, I honestly think as a writer, like writing a redemption character makes you such a, a more empathetic human mm -hmm. because it forces you to get into the head of something that someone that might not act like you. Right. And to understand them and their motives and their story and how they can possibly change. And that's, that's such a cool experience, right? Yeah. It makes you grow as a writer. It makes you grow as a human. And I think that's one of the reasons, like when people think about characters, like memorable characters, so many times they are redemption characters yeah. because we can connect with their humanness, right? When you have a, a near perfect character or a character that doesn't undergo a ton of growth, they are, they're hard to connect to in a really deep way because they don't have those humanizing characteristics. Right. They don't have anything that makes you go relate to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So you yep. don't go, oh, I might have had a similar experience or, you know. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. Totally. I would agree. So growth is important. It is. Um, so you have only the one redemption, Callum. Yep. Knowing what you know, would you write a female redemption character or would you just avoid it? Um. <clears throat> I think I would. I don't know that I would do it in a romance. I just think romance readers are tough critics of women, generally. They are. Even, even character growth ones. Oh, it's right. true. Like, yeah. I, like, when I was doing all this, like, research, I told you, like, so many of the redemption characters that were listed were honestly just actual, just characters that underwent a lot of growth. Like, they were mm -hmm. super shallow or super bratty or, you know, whatever it is. And then they would go through and, you know, like slow changes and stuff. But a lot of times it'd be like in a TV show where they had like four seasons to do it. Yeah. Right? So it's a big undertaking, I think, with a woman, mm -hmm. way more than a man. Well, yeah. And what that's, what my that? research says. that's what my research says. Like it yeah. is the, the, the one redemption character that I could find was female was like, um, an agent, it was like a, like a, she was basically like a killer that was like assigned to, you know, do all these murders and she had slow, slow redemption, but like some people would say she'd cross the moral event horizon, you know, it's right. just, but that was the only one I could find that like, I would say was a true redemption character where they committed some unforgivable act and then come back from it. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. And they did redeem her, huh? That's what I haven't watched it because it's a show probably beyond my scope of being comfortable with. <laughs> but that's that. what people said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Well, now I'm kind of intrigued, and we might have to discuss after what the show is. Okay. Now I'm like, hmm. Sure. Um, so, are you a plotter or a pantser? Definitely a pantser. So do you ever, okay, because here's my thing is I'm like, knowing what I know, I would never willingly write a redemption female. Mm. However, yes. I also know as it. a pantser, mm. sometimes it just happens and you're like, no, don't, don't do that. Which I know most non-authors would go, you have control over your characters. You really you, don't. They do their own yeah, thing. They kind of do do their own things. And you, and, and if you try not to have them do their own things, it's, that's a struggle. It truly well, is. Then you're just fighting them the entire book. Yes. Very fun. Fighting them the whole book. And it, you can feel it, I think, a lot of the time. Oh, totally. So I, I will be interested to, to watch your books coming out. Because, I mean, you know, I, I don't think I ever intentionally made Rose bad. But 
she just ended up being bad. Well, and I think the interesting thing is you can write a character that you're not intending to redeem. Like, I don't know that you went in planning to redeem. Well, that's true. Right? Like, you were just, like, writing your other book. She was a side character. Yeah. And then she got her redemption. Which, how often does that happen, too? That all of a sudden you have no intention of writing these characters. And then you're like, oh, dang, now they have to have a book. Oh, totally. Darn characters trying to control me. <laughs> Taking over our lives. I know. Okay. Very good. I like that. I, I'll have no idea what, what it's called again, but that black hole thing. <laughs> the moral of the horizon. I'll only remember it as the black hole thing. <laughs> the black hole thing. I mean, as long as you remember it, I don't think it matters what you call it in your head. Uh, so... Um, anything else we need to know about redemption? Hmm. Without like giving your whole class. <laughs> I think the only thing I would say is that, um, I, so I was talking to my husband about this the other night. We went to dinner and we were chatting about my class and everything, but I do think a lot of times, and this isn't always the case, but sometimes when when readers won't forgive a character, like you just kind of have to know that it's about them, right? That it's like their issues and their, you know, whatever they're caught up in that they've been affected by or whatever that makes them unforgiving. And so, I don't know. Like, this, this does lead me to another question that I just thought of. Okay. So, we both write Regency mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, do you think in some readers' minds, titles either give them more, more likely to forgive or more likely not to forgive based on your point of view of titles? Do you think that plays a role in our type of writing? Interesting. I don't know if I would have thought of that, but I can totally see that. I mean, like, I mean, just generally as a society, we are biased toward people with good looks people with money, people with power, like, how can we not be a little bit more forgiving of that? Yeah, because I, I mean, all because it's that whole, you are going to have those people who are like, oh, people who have money always get off. Or those, you know, politics. I mean, I think it's also just so much of it is like what the character backstory is, right? Yeah. Like, what kind of home did they come from? Like, because you can come from a super loving home in a high up, um, you know, like be an Earl or whatever. Yeah. And I think that would make you a lot less forgiving of, the, mm. of that person. Whereas if, you know, you come from a very cold calculating family, that's all about title and money and wealth. Mm -hmm. And so you have been trained to think in a certain way and act in a, you know, like mm -hmm. I think, so I think, it, it can play an influence, but it's not the only. Right. Here, right. That's probably true. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, you're probably right. I would guess just because you're a certain position doesn't mean you can escape that. Right. Or, or leap over the line. Oh, totally. I mean, I think you could in society in a lot of ways, but when it comes yeah. to like of a personal nature. Yeah. I don't think so. Good point. Good point. All these things I'm going to have in mind every time I write I'm a redemption you really character. Deep thoughts, Mindy. You're I, really know. <laughs> I know. I'm a little worried that one character that because I have a a series right now that's like seven guys, and one of them is he's a bit grumpy, and I'm like, oh no! By the time his book comes, is he going to be a redemption character? I hope not. He's just grumpy, but grumpy's not not redeeming, right? No, it's, it's just character arc. arc. It's just but growth. you could still do something. You just never know. Yeah, it's true. His father's not dead and he doesn't like his father. So he still has some, <laughs> something still to do, just... but yeah. we're not even going to go there. <laughs> oh dear. No, anyway. Dear. All right. It was fabulous talking to you today. It was so fun. We'll we even like this again kind of on topic, which I'm impressed with. I know. I know. Sometimes I do not stay on topic and then I have to edit and that's never pretty. Well, the good news is, is we went to lunch last week. So we got that all out of our systems. It's so a true story. We can stay on topic. That's true. Well, there we go. Look at us. Yep. That's the, that's the key, Mindy. Okay. We'll just always have to go out to lunch.
Yep. I can do that. I can do that too. I can commit to that plan. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All uh, right. Thank thanks you. for having me. And everyone, don't forget to subscribe so that you can make sure and see all of these lovely videos with all of these lovely authors. And we will see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.